This GeoMap app tutorial describes the content of the GeoMap app menus and the functionality of the toolbar icons. The menus across the top of the GeoMap app window allow us not only to access the wealth of built-in datasets but also to import data in a variety of formats. Here we'll look just briefly at each menu and more descriptions about them will come up in other tutorials. The file menu allows us to import data in a variety of formats as well as to save the map window as an image. Under base maps we access a large amount of gridded and image data, everything from geophysical data sets all the way through to atmospheric and oceanographic data. The portals menu offers interfaces that have customized functionality. These customized interfaces allow enriched exploration of the data. Under datasets we find tabular data, again ranging from geophysical, atmospheric and oceanographic information, all the way through to human impact data. The focus sites menu contains compilations of data for areas of special interest, including those study sites, the margins and Ridge 2000 programs. In overlays we can control the display of distance and color scales, as well as the plotting of coastlines, names and political boundaries. Overlays of lakes, rivers and watersheds are also in here. Using the bookmarks menu we can specify areas of interest that we can later call up as a bookmark. In the education menu are links to various educational resources including GeoMap app mini lessons that can be used in the classroom. Sometimes GeoMap app brings up different windows and if for any reason these are in the background, we can use the Windows menu to select a window to bring to the foreground. Finally, in the Help menu, we have links to GeoMap App Help as well as to a Feedback and Comments page. We'll now describe the functionality of the toolbar buttons. These are also found in the upper part of the GeoMap App window, here. If we let the cursor hover over each of the buttons, a tooltip is brought up like so. The button on the left allows us to toggle the cursor on and off. The next one is the panning button. When we click this we can drag the map with a little hand symbol. Here we have the diskette symbol which is the save button. With this we can save the map as an image and if we have grids loaded we can save the grids in various formats. Next we have the two buttons for zooming the plus sign zooms in, the minus sign zooms out. This is followed by the distance profiling tool. When we click this, the grid is loaded and we can take profiles. The digitizing button allows us to digitize the global multi-resolution elevation model as well as create profiles along the digitized points. Next along is a manager for shapefiles that we can use when we have shapefiles loaded. If there has been a delay in sharpening the map image, we can click the FX button to focus the map. Clicking on the masking function brings up a mask that shows areas where we have used higher resolution data in the global elevation model. The contributed grids button displays outlines of areas where we have grids contributed to GeoMap app and clicking on one of the boxes will load that grid. The grid icon here is a shortcut that allows us to load the underlying global multi-resolution tile set that comprises the GeoMap app base map. Finally, we have the layer manager button and when we click this we bring up the layer manager if it already is not displayed. And lastly, the position of the cursor on the map is given in the top part of the GeoMap app window here as degrees and minutes and decimal degrees. As we move the cursor, the values change. When we have a grid loaded, we also see the value of the third dimension listed up here. And when we're taking profiles, the distance from the start of the profile is also listed. More information about GeoMap App can be found at www.geomapapp.org.